I'm going to show you how to completely automate the process of grabbing a news article from an RSS feed, rewriting it with ChatGPT, and posting it to a WordPress blog. Oh, and for good measure, we're going to generate a stable diffusion image with Dolly and post that to it as well. Let's jump right in. Now, a few days ago, I launched my brand new website, allyourtech.ai. This is a place where you can submit all of your AI projects, AI art prompts, videos, and even read the latest in artificial intelligence news. But for the news section specifically, I didn't want to just throw up RSS feeds or some generic articles. I wanted to do something a little bit cooler. So I built this system that goes and it grabs RSS feeds and the latest news on all of the artificial intelligence happenings, and then it generates its own titles, it summarizes the articles, and it actually has its own hot take that has its kind of own personality built into the bot. Now on top of that, I wanted there to be an image. So I had it create a prompt that it would send off to Stable Diffusion, specifically to Dolly, so it would generate these featured images. So I'm going to take you through the process, start to finish of how I set this up using some off the shelf tools like Zapier and ChatGPT and Dolly. The first thing you're going to need to do is go over to Zapier.com. You're going to need to create a free account on their system. From there, all you need to do is jump in and create a zap. Is it a zap or a zape? It's a good question. Now from here, you can search for a number of different things that you want to do. So in our case, we could say RSS. So we could look for RSS feeds, and I'll show you the exact recipe that I ended up using. I'm gonna share a link to this zap on my website. All you have to do is sign up for the newsletter. It'll get sent right over to you. The way this works is by basically building out a recipe. If you've ever used IFTTT or something like that, it's very similar steps and process. So the first thing we're gonna start with is their module called New Items in Multiple Feeds in RSS. And the way this works, you just click on it and you can open it up and you can see that it has RSS feeds and you can add a new event type. So you can either have new items in an RSS feed or what triggers it. So this is the event type that actually makes something happen, right? So you can think of this as sort of programmatically, if an RSS feed has a new event or a new item specifically in it, it's going to trigger something in the stages below this. So you can say new item in feed, click continue. And then from here, you're gonna grab a feed URL. Now this is actually easier than you think. So in my case, you can pull up a web browser and you can go to, let's say TechCrunch. And then if you type in most sites, you can type slash feed and it'll actually pull up an RSS feed. They look something like this. So if we just grab this URL, we're off to the races. Maybe you're doing something on fashion or some other vertical or niche. You're just gonna to wanna to find feeds that are specific to that. Super easy to find. You can even do a Google search for something like top fashion RSS feeds, right? And so you're gonna come back with a whole bunch of different blogs, Feedspot, RSS app. A lot of these are gonna have a listing of things that you can grab, and that's gonna be a good starting point for you. And once you've got your first RSS feed, what you're gonna do is you're gonna just drop the RSS feed URL in here. Now, these are publicly accessible RSS feeds, so you don't actually need a username and password, so you can leave those blank. Now, this is the important part. So what triggers a new feed item? So by default, it has this smart detection that uses a different GUID or URL. So every time a URL is seen in the RSS feed, it creates a unique identifier for it, and it uses that to determine if there's a new item or not. So I usually use that, but some of these other sections and options might be appropriate depending on what you're going with. So from there, what we can do is we can go, okay, refresh fields, click continue, and now it's going to test it. So we'll click test trigger. And this is just gonna test to make sure that the RSS feed is working. And as you can see, it pulled back an item. You can see the title, the link, and then the content throughout here. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. Once that looks good, we can click continue. Now onto this next part, what you're going to do is you can click this plus sign and you can do a search here. So you could go chat GPT and you can see that there's a chat GPT beta. Now, when you add this for the first time, you're going to have to add your open AI API key. So if you don't have one of those super easy to do, all you have to do is go over to open AI. You can sign up for a free account there and they give you some credits to start with it. I think it's something like $5. And you're gonna come in here and create new secret key. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want you to see my secret key, but you do that, you grab the key, and you head on over back to Zapier and you just fill that in. Super easy. And once you've done that, you're gonna have this chat GPT block. So you're gonna go ahead and click on that. The event type 
is conversation. So we're going to keep it at that. That's the default. That's the only thing you can do here. Click continue. And then this is the really important part. Now, user message. This is the bit that's actually going to get sent over to ChatGPT as the question or the prompt that you'd normally fill in in the box. So in my case, what I'm going to do when you click on this box, it drops down all of the different pieces of data that came back in that RSS feed. So in my case, I want to use the description. Now, the reason we're going to use this description field is because it has all of the text that we need in order to summarize and rewrite the article. So we're going to go ahead and click on description and you can see that's already filled in up there. And then model. This is the actual chat GPT model that we want to use for this. Now I want to use GPT-4. If you don't have access to GPT-4, you can also use 3.5 turbo, but I suggest requesting access to GPT-4 just because the quality of the results that come back are really spectacular. 3.5 though is much, much faster. So keep that in mind as well. Temperature one, I'm not going to mess with that, but you can do this. You can see in the description here, this is a temperature between zero and two that ChatGPT will use to generate a response. It's basically the randomness of the response. Keeping it at one as a default seems to work well. Now, this is kind of a key piece. There's something in GPT-4 called the system message. And with the system message, you can tell it to act like a very specific thing and answer questions in a very specific way. So this is the system message that gets sent over to ChatGPT. And in this case, what I ended up doing that, find, that seemed to work well for me is, you are a helpful assistant that summarizes news articles about artificial intelligence in a funny and witty way. Now, there are a couple key things here. First, we're telling it it's a helpful assistant. Secondly, we're telling it it summarizes news articles. We're giving it the idea that all the news that we're doing is going to be about our artificial intelligence. And then we're telling it to be funny and witty when it comes back with its replies. Start with a bulleted list containing a breakdown of the article's key points and create a closing paragraph with your hot take. Include H1, H2, H3 tags in the final output where appropriate. I wanted it to actually build out the markup that WordPress uses in its blog posts. It's a little bit better for search engine optimization. So that's the key there. I didn't adjust any of this. It's username, user, assistant, name, assistant. That's all fine. When we click continue, we can test this. So you can see as we go, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be sending over that system message and that prompt from that last piece and generating a GPT-4 response. All right, here it is. And we can check out what the response came back with. This is actually pretty cool. So content, the H1, the heading that's going to be at the top is cloudy with a chance of AI. It has the summary and then it has three bullet points. And then there's the hot take. Just when you thought the public cloud might be destined for foggy, unclear skies. And so it goes through and it just writes out that summary that we're looking for. This is great. Now, if you wanted to make some changes, you didn't like the data that it was coming back with, you could always come back up here to the action, modify your prompt. That's going to be the easiest way to get different data out of this and then come back down to test again. And once you're good with this, you're going to go ahead and click on continue. And we've got yet another chat GPT window, but this one's going to do something a little bit different. So we're going to go down to the same thing, action. And when we go into action, this time I'm sending over the title of the article to this. Now for this one, I'm using GPT 3.5 turbo because I don't need kind of the precision and the extra, honestly, the added expense of running a GPT 4 prompt. Now in this one, my prompt is a little bit different. So I said, you're a helpful assistant that creates images based on article titles. Create a brief visual description of what an image would look like for the title. So this is going to create our actual title or our prompt that we're going to send over to Dolly to create our stable diffusion image. So once we're good with that, we're going to click retest action. And that should just take a couple seconds because GPT 3.5 is really fast. Cool. So you can see the content. The image would show a fluffy white cloud on a sunny blue sky with some dark clouds in the background. The foreground of the image would have the descending line graph showing a downward trend. So you can see this is really detailed. And I absolutely love that this is able to even be created by AI. So we're going to click on continue. And we've got one more chat GPT window. So we're going to go to action again. And this is the one that I used to create the title for the blog post. I don't want to reuse the same title that came back in the RSS feed, obviously. I want to come up with something a little bit more clever. Now, this shows all of the previous steps that have been executed. So in our case, we know that the first conversation with ChatGPT is the one that created the title and everything else. So we're going to come down here and we don't see it in this box. So we're going to click show all options and we're going to scroll down to assistant response message. This one has the actual 
heading and summary from the earlier response that came back in the previous chat GPT window. So we're gonna click on that and that get that added to the box. Now the really cool thing here is, again, we're gonna use 3.5 Turbo because it's fast. And then the only other thing we're gonna do is say, you are a WordPress title generator. Create a concise title for the blog post that is catchy and optimized for search engines. Remove all HTML in the response and do not use quotes. I noted that sometimes it came back with markup, HTML markup in the response, and then sometimes it uses quotations. So I asked it not to do either of those things. Those are the only changes I made to this. And so we'll test this and see what it comes back with for a title. And in this case, it came back with cloud computing is here to stay. Insights from TechCrunch's Ron Miller. Go ahead and click continue again. And in this step, we're actually going to send over the request to Dolly in order to generate our image. So the event type is generate image. So again, for this, you're going to need to log into OpenAI so that you can get access to Dolly and connect all the pieces together. Once you've done that, click continue. And for the prompt, remember that we generated this in this third item here. So conversation with chat GPT, show all options, and then we're gonna look for that assistant response message. And you can see here, you can verify it's the right one. The image would show a fluffy white cloud. Perfect. So once we've done that, and we're happy with that, we can select the number of images that it's gonna create, and even the size for the images. So you can see you have a number of options here. I just went with 512 by 512, that seemed to be big enough. Click continue, and we can test this. This is the really cool part because it actually uses that prompt to generate a stable diffusion image, and I'm always blown away by how cool these come out. Dolly isn't the best at creating these images, but you know what, it's still pretty cool. And we can see in the response, it came back with a URL. So we're gonna copy that. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what the image looks like. And there's our fluffy clouds, our line chart going downwards. It illustrates exactly what we wanted to get out of this article, love it. Once we're happy with that, click on continue. Now this next piece, we're gonna have to actually upload media in WordPress. So this is where it's gonna actually take that image that was generated by Stable Diffusion, and it's gonna upload it to our media files so that it can be used later on when we post as a featured post. So this part's really cool. So you're gonna to need to come in here and for the event type, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, upload media, create post, update post. So we're gonna to go to upload media, and then we're gonna to go to account, and you're gonna to need to connect this to your WordPress site. Now, here's a key tip. You've gotta have the Zapier WordPress plugin installed on your WordPress blog. So go ahead and do that first. And once you've got that in place, you can come back here, you can make sure it's connected. You're gonna to need to give it your WordPress admin username and admin password, and then click on continue. Now, for the action type on this one, we know that we generated the image down here in step five. So click that drop down, and then just click on image URL. That's gonna give you that URL that we used to view that image just a minute ago. Now for post, we don't need to select anything. Now for the file name of the image, you want something unique. So what I ended up using is I clicked on this, I went to number two, conversation in chat GPT, and there's this completion ID. This is basically just a random string of characters that's a unique identifier for that initial chat that we had. So I selected that, but then here's the key. Right after it, you do .png. That makes sure that it's named as a ping file when it's uploaded to WordPress. Now with that done, we don't need a title, author, caption, description. We don't need any of these other fields. So you can go ahead and click continue and you can click on retest action. And this is gonna upload the image to your actual WordPress blog. Now, if this works, we're gonna be able to check it in just a second. Cool, so that's done. We're gonna jump over to our WordPress blog. We're gonna go to the admin panel. We're gonna find media in the menu and click on library and we should have that image uploaded, and there it is. So now we know that it's connecting to WordPress properly and it's actually uploading the images, which is amazing. So we'll go back and we're on the final steps here. So the last piece we need to do is create the actual WordPress post. So we go into the event type and we click create post, continue. Make sure that again, we're connected to our WordPress site. And then this is the cool part. So down here, post type is a post. Title, we're gonna grab from number four, Remember, that's our title generator from ChatGPT. Show all options, and we're gonna scroll down for assistant response message where it has the actual title. And we're just gonna click that and have it added. For content, this is where you can get a little bit more creative. So the first piece I added here is the assistant response message from number two. This is where it summarized the article. So we can click on number two, 
show all options, assistant response, and you can see it has all the headings, the H1s, the H2s, the summary, everything that we asked our first ChatGPT bot to create for us. Once we've added that, the last thing I wanted to do is link back to the original article. I don't want to take full credit for these. I just wanted to create these summaries of the articles, but I want to make sure that people know where the original content and article came from. So what I did is I just put a break, original article as the text, and then from the original RSS feed, you can click down and you can just select link. That's just going to be the original link from the article. If you'd like to, you can do an excerpt. I set the author as admin, but if you have a different author, you can obviously select that in the dropdown. Featured media, this is a key piece. So we're gonna click on this, go to uploaded media in WordPress. This was that last step where we uploaded the image to our WordPress blog. And we're just gonna select the ID, number six. Once that's in place, it's gonna know to use that as the featured image when it actually posts this to our WordPress blog. For comments, you can decide if you wanna leave those on or off for the post. What type of format do you want? Categories, you can select multiple categories here from your blog. You can add tags and you can set if you want the status to be published or if you want it to be a rough draft or scheduled for a future time. Once you're happy with all the fields there, click continue. We're going to retest this and it's actually going to post the post to our WordPress blog. So we're going to click retest. It'll take just a moment. You can see it went by really fast. We'll go back over to our WordPress blog. We'll go to posts, all posts and cloud computing is here to stay. Amazing. So we can go back to the blog and we can actually visit the site and see this live. We'll go to AI news and there's our image and our article. We can click on the article and we can see there's our summary, the hot take, everything we wanted from this. Now from there, we can jump back over to Zapier. And if you click on publish zap, this is what's actually going to make this live. And once this is live, it's a completely automated process. Anytime there's a new article posted to that RSS feed, it's going to automatically go through this entire process and post it over to your WordPress blog. Hopefully you found that as helpful as I did. It automated the heck out of a process that normally takes me quite a bit of time to get accomplished. Be sure to check out this other video. Hit that like and subscribe button so YouTube knows I'm doing a good job. Join my free Discord. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. We'll catch you next time. Thank you so much.